Hi everyone, this is Alvin from Dr. Wealth. I'm going to share about data center REITs and specifically those that are listed on the Singapore Exchange. So the R2 Pure Play data center REITs that's listed in Singapore, uh, one is Capital DC REIT and the other one is Digital Core REIT. So why are these REIT prices falling? I do hear some investors were wondering and know they were thinking whether it is time to sell them or in fact is it time to buy them so these are the questions that i have had from investors let's tackle this once and for all usual disclaimer pause and read it if you need to and this is the first read that we're going to talk about which is capital dc read ticker ajbu and this read has been a darling in the stock market of singapore and you know you can see the meteoric rise from a dollar in 21.5 to a peak of three dollar zero four cents in mid 2020 so um, there was there was a lot of like good story behind this read itself because you know singapore is a small place and then there's no data center read that's going to be built from 21.9 onwards uh government sort of like freeze it and you can see that meteoric rise actually uh, became steeper in from 21.9 onwards until it peaked at around post covid three dollars zero four cents and then it was downhill all the way until today about 198 dollars and that is a 35 percent decline from the top so will you go down lower and what is causing this share price going down in the first place right because understanding the drivers understanding the reasons behind why the share price is performing this way will give us more information right whether this is the bottom is it going to rebound or you know we should just avoid this stock at this point in time and the next stock that i want to share is digital core read this is the other pure play read that's listed on singapore exchange it ipo at a price of 88 cents and on the first day of trading it just shot up 15 percent that shows you how uh, well received these data center reads are when it comes to uh, the, even the local investors so um, the peak happened to be at $1.18 that happened at the start of 2022, right? So it was just listed in end 2021, December. So that is, uh, this is quite a rather new read, less than a year old. And uh, the share price has fallen 36% to $0.75 cents today. So you can see that even for this uh, digital core read, which most of their, in fact, all of their reads, uh, all of their properties are in North America, one in Canada, the rest all in the United States. So you can see that even this uh, read is not spared from the sell down that's happening in the markets as well. So what are some of the reasons I highlight i'm going to highlight three of them and the first one is rising interest rate so this is a well-known thing that everyone should uh, be expecting at this point in time that rates are in fact going to raise further um in in the us and when us raise the rates singapore is going to be inheriting some of this interest rate environment as well so uh federal reserve have now raised the rates to about 1.75 percent right you can see a very steep up turn since the start of 2022 to combat the rising inflation that we are seeing right now and inflation is still high so it is unlikely that interest rate is going to come down anytime soon and even at 1.75 percent this is like way low lower than what we have seen uh in in the 90s in the 80s right so it is a phenomenon in the last 13 or 14 years because of the great financial crisis in the past and with qe1 qe2 qe3 qe4 happening um, this low interest rate, low interest rate environment has here to stay for quite a while until inflation hit us. And of course, the COVID-19 um, supply disruption was one of the catalysts that caused inflation to go up. Okay, so that's my view. And looking at Singapore, let's come back to Singapore and look at the 10-year bond yield, the Singapore government bond yield, which is triple A rated. And we can see that it has even cross 3% at one point in time, the bond yield. Now it has come back below 3%, but it's very near that 3% range. And in fact, it's like a 10 year high, right? So um, with this, what is the impact? Why, why is rising interest rate impactful to REITs? So I'm just saying that it's not just for data center REITs, right? It's all for, it's for all the REITs out there, okay? But it is more impact, impactful for the data center REITs because they've been pretty much overvalued in the past few years. As you can see, Capital DC REIT has a phenomenal rise in the share price because of uh, investors' demand. And it felt that, investors probably felt that it won't go wrong, right? 
So one of the first thing that causes REITs prices to come down is because of anticipation of lower distribution, right? Why is that so? Because a lot of all these REITs, they borrow money to buy properties, okay? And properties are capital intensive investments. So they will need to borrow quite a sum of money in order for them to uh, uh, acquire these properties. And in fact, Digital Call REIT did an estimation. They find that if there is a 0.5% of 50 basis point increase in interest rate, it will reduce their distributable income by $700,000 per year. And if we put it in terms of percentage of their distributed income, that's about 1.4% per year. In my view, okay, it does impact, but it is not a very significant number. Of course, investors will hope to see rising dividends rather than declining dividends, right? So that could be one of the factors that is affecting these REITs. And when, um, another angle to look at this is that when interest rate goes up, that means that there are more options for those income investors. They don't necessarily need to buy REITs and they may sell some of the REITs and shift their capital to safer investment that give them higher uh, interest. Right or the same interest for the matter of fact, but because they are less risky, uh, it makes their portfolio is is like de-risking their portfolio. So, for example, in Gen twenty twenty one last year, Apple DC read dividend yield was just a mere three point one percent. It is not attractive for a read. Okay, so because I would think that assuming right the rest of the Singaporean or even foreign investors looking at REITs investment, I'll think that they would demand at least five percent dividend yield. But because the outlook for data center REITs was so favorable that investors were willing to pay even though it was yielding at 3.1%, right? I think it was too expensive then, okay? And then now, fast forward to today, SGS 10-year bond yield is close to 3%. And you think about this, right? What, which one would you buy? Would you buy a government bond that's triple A rated for 3% with a capital guaranteed at the end of maturity versus a REIT that is giving you 3% dividend yield without any capital guarantee with no maturity and it takes the market risk much more than what the bond would do right so naturally if we are sensible we will go for the bond and when that happens right you will sell down the read and then you buy the bond bond prices uh, will stabilize right as long as the, the yield don't continue to go up further and with that then do you think uh, uh, for in order for the capital DC read to entice more investors to come in again, it has to increase its dividend yield. But it is very difficult to increase the dividend per share or the distribution per unit for read perspective, right? Because uh, you need to raise the rent by a lot more in order for you to do that, and that's not possible in a very short span of time. And hence, the only way for the dividend yield to go up is the share price have to go down. Okay, because dividend yield is equal to dividend per share divided by share price. So the denominator goes down, then the yield will goes up. So that is why the first reason is that rising interest rate causes REITs to be less attractive. And for REITs to regain that attractiveness, it has to have its yield going up. And that means its prices have to come down. Okay, so that's the very first reason. And there are some mitigation is that I don't think these data center REITs are uh, impacted that much because in terms of gearing, they are not as high, right? Compared to other REITs, they can be like maybe 40% gearing. Okay, DC, capital DC REIT is higher at 36% gearing, but digital core rate is just at 26%. And in fact, digital core rate has also hedged 50% of its debt to fixed rates, right? So that uh, are some mitigation and I don't think that it is as serious and we can see the impact to their distributed income is not as large as what people think it is, right? So that's the first uh, good sign, okay? Even though it's a bad news of rising interest rate. The second is that one of the tenants have uh, went bust, declared bankrupt, and um, it is more specific to digital core read because uh, capital DC read at this moment in time, we don't hear any bankruptcy cases, touch wood, okay? But for digital core read, there is one and it is the fifth largest tenant that's contributing to about 7% of digital core reads revenue. So uh, it sounds significant, right? And although it was not really openly declared by who this person is or who this company is, uh, it is rumored that it is this SunGuard Availability Services, this IT company. And it is not an issue at all, right? So this is not the, I, I would think that out of the three issues that I mentioned, this is the least important of all because 
uh, based on what Digital Corey has mentioned about this incident, is that the spare capacity is expected to be taken up by other customers because the demand is quite high even at this point in time. And even the sponsor has agreed in principle to guarantee the cash flow if there is indeed a shortfall due to this bankruptcy. So you can see that regardless what happened, it is very likely that Digital Corey can uh, recoup that or maintain that um, rental that has been deriving from Sangha. So it is not an issue at all. Let's look at the third one. And I think this is likely the most important thing that in data read investors should look at. Okay. Um, this person in the picture is Jim Channels. He is a hedge fund manager. He became famous for shorting Enron, the fraud that happened like, I don't know, 30 years ago. Or 40 years ago, I can't remember exactly the date, but uh, he's an old timer, def definitely a veteran player in the field, and he has built up a 200 million dollar fund just to short data center reads. So that is a very high conviction uh, bet, and of course, as data center read investor, you want to take note who is taking the opposite side of your trade. And his view is this: okay, his view is that these data center reads are kind of like a bit obsolete. Okay, because they would need a better infrastructure to support the big cloud companies. And namely, they are your Amazon Web Services, your Microsoft Azure, as well as your Google Cloud. These three competitors to, uh, or these three cloud providers are the largest three in the world, and they command more than 50% of the market share. And they've been increasingly building their own data center to meet their own needs. And eventually, what he's trying to say is that these big players will move out from the data center reads. They will start renting the space in the data center because they already have their own. Why would you use them? And in fact, the infrastructure is poorer than the ones that they have built. That's specially designed for their needs. So he's saying that he's shot all these data center reads. They are obsolete Okay, in time to come. So that is a very, very serious uh, bet against the data center read that you need to pay attention to. So let's take a look at the clients or the customers of these two data center read. So the first one, Capital DC, we can see that the biggest company or the biggest client is this internet enterprise, it's not disclosed, and it's mentioned as one of the largest tech companies globally. So it does sound like it is a cloud provider that is using Capital DC space. And that contribute to 36% of the rental income. So I do think that this is something that Chanos uh, is right on, right? He is saying that it is a big chunk and if they move, it will meet, it will leave a big hole for Capital DC to fill. Okay, of course, it's not that they can't fill it, they will probably could fill it, okay? But the question is, um, would they do it fast enough, right? So that is the question that is being raised here. The second one is Digital Call Read. And these are top 10 clients. Similarly, they have a very big exposure. The first big client is a 36% exposure. It's a Fortune 50 software company. Okay, I looked through the Fortune 50 companies and software kind of related, I would say that it's likely to be Microsoft. Okay, if that is right, then it is also what channels have been saying. If Microsoft build more of their data centers, they'll eventually move out of this uh, read itself. So he does have a point that it has impact to this data center read if the big cloud providers decided to move away from these data center reads. But it's not all gloom and doom. Why I say, why I say that is because dedicated servers are still relevant, right? Because how this data center make money is not just serving these big cloud providers, but also to other corporates who want to own their own servers. They don't want to rent the, or subscribe to the cloud services by the big tech companies, for example, for many reasons. It could be because they want more control because with your own server, you can set it up, you can configure the way you want it, right? Even for hardware itself. And you will have more privacy and data protection because you are not uh, like sharing with uh, the resources with other uh, uh, subscribers in the cloud infrastructure. So you can impose or, or create more layers of protection for your own service. And then lastly, contrary to what people think it is, is that um, it can be cost effective to have your own dedicated service instead of subscribing to the cloud services. Okay, this is more for bigger companies because smaller companies definitely is cheaper to go with the cloud because you can scale, pay as you need, pay as you use. 
But for bigger companies, you have the economies of scale and that's where having your own servers can be more cost effective. And don't take my word for it because I saw this report or this article that's published by A16Z, a venture capitalist. And um, they said that the once you hit a certain scale, okay, for your company, your IT needs actually becomes much more uh, sophisticated and you you probably pay more by using cloud services. So they use Dropbox as an example, and they say that uh, Dropbox start, was initially using a lot of the cloud services. Actually, it's mostly Amazon. And after, in 2016, they decided, okay, I th they, they think that they need to scale down the level of uh, cloud services they subscribe to, and they started to build their own servers and started to rent spaces in these data center reads so that they can just put their servers there and operate as per normal. Right, so once they did that, they actually saved seventy five million over two years. That is significant, okay, and their margins actually improve as well, right? So that is an example why I say that you know uh, these data center reads will still be relevant because they will be serving companies like Dropbox where they have the scale and they realize that it is cheaper to have their own servers, but they need the space, and that's why they're renting from the data centers, okay? So I do think that yes, cloud. Providers will grow strength and strength. They will build their own data centers. They may move away from this rented space, but they will also, this rented space will also be filled with other players who find that the cloud services are just too expensive for their scale. So it will just be a coexistence. So I don't think they are so obsolete like what gym channels have said, right? And maybe if you want to be extra careful, Right then, between the two, I would think that Capital DC REIT is a better choice. Why? Because majority of properties are in Singapore. Right, you can see in the in the pie chart itself, more than fifty percent of their properties in Singapore. And the good thing is that there is no new data centers that's being built since twenty one nine. That is the mandate from the that's the instruction from the government because it is very uh, energy consuming, and uh, Singapore has limited space, basically. Right, so the it is not favorable for more data centers to be built. So even if the big cloud providers, they want to build their own new data centers in Singapore, it is hard to come by. So the chances of them having to rent from capital DC read is higher. It's harder to move away, right? It's unlike the US where digital core read uh, uh, have most of their assets in. And that is why uh, the, the risk of this big cloud companies moving away from digital core read is higher as compared to capital DC read. And the big cloud providers cannot ignore Singapore because it is a hub in Asia Pacific and it is probably even the nodes for a lot of subsea cables, right, that can connect to the servers uh, uh, in Singapore. So I do think that the capital DC read is in a very good position. And lastly, land scarce. Okay, as we know, Singapore is a very small place and uh, really building a lot of data centers is not a very good idea okay, because a lot of other users uh, are competing for the for the land itself, right? So it's not all going to data centers. So I do think that Capital DC read in comparison to digital core read is in a better position to hold hostage of all these uh, users of data centers, all right? Including the big cloud providers. So is data, this Capital DC read at a good price right now? So this is taken from uh, DBS research, uh, um, uh, the cell sites analyst research paper. And we can see that on the left side is the distribution U, uh, four year chart. This is not five year chart, it's a four year chart. And then on the right is the price to book, uh, five year, uh, four year chart as well. Okay. And how we look at this is that usually if the U, dividend U, is on the higher side, which is measured by one standard deviation above the average, is usually considered a good entry point. Okay. Of course, you can say that it can potentially go to two standard deviation, right? But who knows? And it is not good to just bet on projection or predictions. I would say that it might be a good time to start dollar cost averaging, right? Because at 5% U right now at capital DC for capital DC read is a good juncture to begin that. And maybe if you really go to two standard deviation, you can average all the way there and you buy cheaper and cheaper. And likewise for the price to book four year average, you can see it is at 1.8, but now it's at minus one standard deviation, which means again, it tallies with the dividend yield um, kind of a measurement that it is at minus one standard deviation. So it is considered cheap enough for a 
entry as well right again we also don't know whether we'll go to minus two standard deviation is possible right but we never know where the bottom is and i think it is a good time to start accumulating if you are interested in this space and if we look technicals right looking at the chart itself it still look bearish because the share price have been trending down and it's still below the 100 day 200 day moving averages which i drew on the chart itself right so from a technical perspective the traders will tell you no 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 this is not time to enter right you are just catching a falling knife okay so it depends on how your you approach the market if you are a short-term trader then i think yes it's too early to bet for a rebound but if you're a long-term investor i would think that the more fundamental analysis will be more relevant to you and it is uh, at a point that i think a good entry has present itself okay so in summary my right, data center reads have been beaten down it's down like 30 over percent since the start of the year and i gave you three possible reasons first is rising interest rate second is there's a bankrupt tenant that affect digital core rate more than the rest but it's non-issue because the lost income is going to be recovered one way or another and then the big cloud providers the third one is the biggest of all because uh, they are becoming instead of becoming instead of being customers of these data reads data center reads they are actually become competitors right creating their own data centers and offering the services to other companies but i also uh, address that issue that you know uh, they will likely have a coexistence i don't think that data center read will just be uh, uh, you know just go and go extinct overnight it's just too impossible because there are uh, companies that require the spaces right we use dropbox as an example where they have cost saving by having their own dedicated data uh, service rather than just using cloud alone and that's why i say the impact are mitigated or limited to the extent so i do think that relatively capital dc read presents a better uh, investment opportunity at this point in time because they are mainly having their properties in singapore which is a land scarce uh, there's no growth in data centers so they have more bargaining power over the cloud providers right and it may not be the bottom but i think at minus one standard deviation for price to book at and at plus one standard deviation dividend yield kind of a trading range it is a good the dollar cost averaging point for those long-term investors but for short-term traders who wants to bet on a quick rebound in the next few weeks or the next few months i think that is harder to say right you probably want to stay away but for long-term investors i do think that the opportunity might have come already so i hope this would give you a better clearer idea what is going on in the data center read space because i do get a lot of questions over uh, this topic itself and uh, hopefully it clears up all the doubt you have right and you are clearer about what to do next and hope you like the video remember to give me a thumbs up as well as subscribe to this dr wealth channel i'll do more of this analysis and i'll share with you in future videos make sure you don't miss it okay that's all for now goodbye